Welcome to the emerging relationship between social media and agenda setting theory. A term first coined in a 1972 paper, the theory suggests that the amount of coverage the mass media gives to an issue determines the importance the public gives to that issue. In other words, if the evening news, the daily newspaper, and the radio are all reporting on topic A every day for a week, but they are giving very little coverage to topic B, a person may start to believe that topic A is more important than topic B. The topics that are getting lots of media attention are called the media agenda. The topics that the media consuming public think are important are called the public agenda. McCombs and Shaw in 1972 suggested that the media agenda sets the public agenda. And that is agenda setting theory. Is social media affecting agenda setting? If the media agenda sets the public agenda, who sets the media agenda? Could social media be playing a role in setting the media agenda? Twitter, blogs, and Facebook weren't around when McCombs and Shaw did their initial agenda-setting research in the late 60s. However, modern research has found that in some situations, social media platforms are setting today's media agenda. Let's take a look at some different examples of media. Twitter and television. Researchers in Chile found Twitter set the agenda for broadcast television news coverage after the country was hit by an earthquake and tsunami in 2010. The researchers focused on the Twitter and broadcast television coverage during the seven days following the earthquake. They analyzed the tweets of 270 Chilean journalists. Then, they analyzed the primetime news content of the four major national television networks. The study found that the Twitter agenda of the journalists significantly predicted the media agenda of the broadcast networks. One might say, well, they only looked at the journalist's tweets, so it's really just the media setting the media agenda. While that is true, the researchers found that 40% of the journalist's tweets were actually retweets. That means 40% of the Twitter agenda could potentially be coming from citizen sources. So what does it all mean? It shows the potential for the public agenda to have a role in setting the media agenda and that shows a potential shift in agenda-setting theory. Now, let's look at independent web blogs. In the first decade of the 2000s, independent political blogs matured to resemble traditional journalism in form and practice, and they began to play an influential role. But is the blogosphere just reciting the media agenda set by the elite traditional media outlets? One study suggests that the answer is no. Independent political blogs are not having their agendas set by the elite traditional media. The study looked at 18 of the top U.S. independent blogs across the political spectrum. The researcher used hyperlinks embedded in the posts as a way to measure the sources that the blogs were citing. Mraz found that independent blogs across the political spectrum were linking equally to independent sources like other blogs as much as they were linking to elite traditional media outlets like the New York Times or the Washington Post. However, the New York Times and the Washington Post were the two most linked to sources across all the blogs. And the New York Times and the Washington Post blogs did not link much to independent blogs, but instead they linked to other elite traditional media outlets. So what does it all mean? It means independent blogs aren't setting the agenda for the blogs of the elite traditional media. It also means traditional media still have an agenda-setting role in the independent blogosphere, but they are just one source in a sea of competing sources, and they are not solely responsible for setting the agenda in the blogosphere. Now let's look at Twitter and print media. Do tweets from political leaders set the agenda of print media outlets? One research study suggests tweets from politicians, think tanks, and interest groups may not set the media agenda, but the tweets certainly influence the media agenda. The researcher conducted in-depth interviews with print journalists from national and local newspapers. He found that journalists regularly use political tweets as part of their reporting process. The interesting fact is that most of the journalists saw tweets as another form of press release and they didn't think the tweets influenced their reporting. However, through the interviews, 
The researcher found the reporters were being influenced by the tweets, and they were using them in six major ways. The reporters were using the tweets from political leaders to help generate story ideas, get tipped off to events they would have otherwise missed, get quotes and polling data, get exposure to alternative viewpoints, get background information to better understand a topic, and to double check information. So what does it all mean? By offering up information subsidies in the form of tweets, think tanks, politicians, and interest groups are playing a role in setting the media agenda for the print journalists in this study. To review, we've looked at a case where the microblog Twitter was shown to set the media agenda for television broadcast news. We've seen that independent blogs are not just looking to the elite traditional media outlets for their agenda, but at the same time, the independent blogs are having almost no effect on the media agenda of elite traditional media blogs. And we've seen that the tweets of political elites have the power to shape the print media agenda by providing easy access to information subsidies. So, is social media setting the media agenda? This collection of studies shows that there are cases where social media are influencing the media agenda. And there are cases where there is no agenda set in effect. However, there is enough evidence to warrant more research into which media under which scenarios are effective in setting the media agenda through social media. Thank you very much for listening.